Hey there, solar folk. I am the solar boy, and today we've got something real fun. I don't know if you can notice this here, but we've got some uh, plastic doodly bobs kind of uh, sticking right here. There's one right here on the ground. That was the originally the plastic covering to these stickers, which means this box has gotten very hot, which you'll see what happened in just a minute. We're gonna be really careful here because we don't want to disturb the bee's nest, as it were. So that's about to be expected. Not supposed to be the way that it is. Basically, I don't know what happened here, but this disconnect got fried. Something shorted and then it just kept shorting all the other wires until everything in here is just fried and dead. And the other fun part is that all these wires in here are still live. There's no fusing past this side of the wiring. So all from here onward, it's just solar panels. And as we know, solar panels, they don't turn off unless there is no sun whatsoever. So we have to turn them off. Now, if you follow me here, we can take a look at how much amperage is actually going through these wires. Uh, I think the home runs must start over here. So it looks like we got our first home runs over here that we can check. Yep, this is string 5-1. We'll set our amp meter to amps. And boy, that's not great. We got about five amps of current going through these suckers. And I actually did some checking before I started here. And there's at least three other strings. So I'm guessing literally all of these strings are shorted, which means we can't safely take that inverter apart without completely killing the source. Otherwise, there's gonna continue to be sparks everywhere. And you know, that's out of my pay grade, but there is a potential solution. I got in contact with these guys, a company called PV Stop. They're out of Australia. They reached out to me uh, a few months ago uh, to talk about safety, firefighters, all that good stuff, mostly around UL 3741. But I asked for a couple of samples to see what it was like to actually use. This job happens to be perfect to test it on. You spray it on, they recommend about 40% coverage of the panel in order to stop the amperage, just starting across the middle of the panel, like the short way, which I'll show you later. This job, uh, aside from the whole firefighter benefit of being able to potentially close off the power produced from panels, really great for service application when you can't shut off the power without like doing the best thing. If you try to remove the connectors at the panels, they're gonna give you a nice big arc, which we'll try later as well. So let's see just how effective this is. Now, PV stop looks like a fire extinguisher, works very much like a fire extinguisher. The stuff inside is pressurized, so you'd use it like any fire extinguisher. You pull the pin, the pin is still attached to the canister. If you're carrying it around and you're gonna reuse it later, I think these are reusable, but don't quote me on that. You basically, you point, whoa. That has quite the range. You wanna make sure you aim right. That is a really nice range. So their recommendation is you start by going across the center of the panels like so. There is obviously some splash over into other things. There's another panel that's unrelated that I'm gonna have to peel off or scrape off at some point. But they say that covering this amount of the panel cuts most of the amperage. So let's go see what that looks like. We are back here at our home run. Let's take a look at this amperage again. Before it was showing about five amps. We're still showing four amps at the moment. So not enough. I might not have gone enough on my first go around. Let's spray it some more and see what happens. Just double checked. And I actually need to get one more set of panels over here. The far left panels there 
they don't actually, they're not a part of this string. It's a string of 18 total panels. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's a little bit of that on here. But yeah, there's enough of this that is kind of speckled and not fully covered. Let's give it some more coverage. Oh yeah, look at that. Now we are down to 0.5 amps. That is a spot where I can pull these, not have to worry about there being any, uh, any arcing or anything. Let's do that quick. No arcing. Oh, I need a, nope. No arcing. Now, maybe we'll go see what happens when you don't put this on and see what it looks like without uh, burning anything down. I have to emphasize, never do anything like this yourself. I am not responsible for activities you choose to accomplish given lack of research. Don't, don't do this. This is what it looks like without PV stop. And now that that one's separated, we are down to, it's nothing. It's nothing at this point uh, because the circuit's broken. The only way that uh, we could potentially have this have amperage to it anymore is if that was contacting maybe some metal that was contacting the inverter, which it's not, it's hanging in free air. So this one, much safer to disconnect. We're not going to use uh, that method of just clean and jerk the, uh, the connectors uh, for all 12 of the strings that we need to disconnect. So we are gonna use PV stop on all the rest of these. And then we're gonna talk about what removal's like. And this stuff, this stuff dries pretty quickly. It is already like set. It's not going anywhere until we go to the clean off stage. So for firefighters that have fought a building with um, a bunch of panels on them, and they want to quickly get it on, make sure it sticks, make sure it shuts down the system. This is good for that. And you can also leave it here for a couple of months because um, you know, you're not gonna get that system serviced probably the very next day. Uh, there's gonna be some time of rebuilding, you know, sorting out what needs to happen. But the panels can sit here for months with this stuff on them and uh, then take it off afterwards. So that's that can empty. In terms of capacity, I went down the rest of this row, which is roughly, what, five times nine, 45 panels, just doing a strip across all of them. Not going terribly fast, but doing just a strip across the middle. I'm gonna get, I have two cans, so I'm gonna go get my other can and do the top and see if just this little line takes care of what we need to take care of when it comes to killing these panels for um, production. All right, we'll put that pin back in there for now and go see what that got us on the rest of these strings. That's got three amps on it, but I bet if we pulled this, it would not have much of a spark because most of the panels have been covered enough where it's not gonna be an issue. We'll look at that later. This one's two amps because it's not just about the amps, it's about how much voltage pressure you have going on too. That's what makes the power. So if you have amps, but no voltage, you're not gonna, you're still not gonna have that much um, power to have an arc. Let's, let's pull one of these, see what it does. Now, once again, this is about three amps uh, after having sprayed down the middle of all of these panels. And this is what that arc is gonna look like. Uh, basically nothing. I mean, I don't know about you, but I didn't see anything and there's no blackening in these connectors. So that is fricking good enough for me, dog, as the kids say. Now, as far as removal of this stuff is concerned, 
That is admittedly a bit of a challenging prospect. Some of this, you can kind of just take your gloves over, rub it, and it just comes right off, just like that. Um, for the larger part of it, you're supposed to be able to almost just peel it off. So once you get it started, you just peel it and it'll kind of all come off as one. You roll it up in a big ball, you chuck it, you take your utility knife blade and you start scraping it up. That takes it right off, but the utility blade is only so big, right? So ideally, we'd want something like a floor scraper that is sharp enough and long enough where we can just kind of shush, shush up and uh, scrape it all off and, and then wad it up in a ball and call it a day. All right, if you notice a change in lighting, it's because it's a week later because when I went to go start taking this stuff off, it was really uh, pliable, it didn't have a big enough scraper, and I, I needed to double check with PV Stop to make sure I was doing this properly. And what I realized was I had forgotten this stuff does need 24 hours to fully cure before you can start removing it. Now, if you're in an, in a, an emergency servicing situation where like you have to get it off and back on exact same day, obviously this isn't, you know, for that, but that's not most of the time, right? And especially in an emergency situation, when you're talking firefighters just need to have the thing off and then it's probably gonna sit there for a couple of days, you know, a week, months, the stuff can be on here for months and be totally fine. So at the end of that day, I was honestly a little apprehensive of like, oh man, this stuff is not easy to peel off. This stuff is not easy to remove. Um, but check this out. Once you get it started, look at how well this adheres together. Now you wanna go around the edges and the places that you have less of the PV stop, it's gonna to wanna to rip more. Obviously I have some areas in here where I didn't fully coat it. Obviously that wasn't my goal was to do 100% coverage. I was kind of doing, you know, what is the minimum that you can get away with for using this. But for the areas that are fully 100% covered, it peels off super nicely. Almost has as much tensile strength as like electrical tape. You know, the less expensive electrical tape, but still, it's pretty impressive. And then once you have it peeled off, you throw it right in a bucket or a trash can or whatever, it can go in general waste. You don't need to treat it like, like chemicals, something toxic that needs to get specially disposed of, it just goes right in the trash. Other alternatives that PV Stop would recommend is you can take a power washer to this and that will generally peel this, peel this off. I didn't feel like bringing a power washer, but we'll see how long it takes me and uh, I'll get back to you. Now that I've gotten farther down and I've started to get to the place where I was just sort of spraying a strip along the middle really fast just to see how little we could get away with, I'm starting to experience the consequence of my actions. There's gonna be a lot of splatters here which you can't peel off, you have to scrape off. You have to come back through with like a vacuum to get all the schnibbly bits. The parts that aren't coated very well, they are just simply not gonna peel off because they don't have enough to them. In fact, like this, this coating here is way below the 40% that PV Stop recommends. And I could experience that last week because what I was seeing last week when I was going down through getting the rest of these, you saw that little spark when I did that first string, but there were some other ones that had bigger sparks. Um, so you definitely want to put on more than just this. Not just for the safety aspect, but for the cleanup aspect, because this stuff it's impossible to peel off because there's just not enough to it. PV Stop also recommends that you go back through and aim for 100% coverage, and this would be a good reason why. I changed my mind. So I lost some audio from when I did tried a smaller pressure washer, but I brought out a 2000 PSI pressure washer. It wasn't really doing a whole lot. You really have to get super close in order to get the uh, PV stop to sheet off. And especially since it's all a whole lot of like speckles everywhere, since I didn't get very good coverage, um, it's taken a lot. So figured we'd try a 3000 PSI to see how it goes. But it, it still really doesn't want to, and it's still gonna take forever. And at this point, I might as well just bring a whole bunch of razor blades and just razor 
all of this off across all the panels, you know, step at the places of the panels that won't get, you know, th that have the most support. So I'm not bending the silicon inward, creating micro fractures. But because of the way I chose to do this, I think is why this is happening. And if I got 100% coverage, I think this would be potentially a lot more pleasant. The other thing I'm noticing is you're probably going to have a way better time trying to get it removed when it's cooler and this stuff is less stretchy. It wants to break more now, it wants to stretch a lot more, and it wants to adhere a lot more. So it's possible that this morning when it was cool would have been a great time to try a pressure washer. It doesn't want to adhere as much. It's but right now, it really doesn't want to separate. I actually wonder how effective my razor would be at removing this right now, given that it is so hot and so pliable and it really needs to work harder to separate the PV stop from the panel. I mean, that still separates pretty good with the razor, but definitely stretchier, definitely doesn't want to come off as easy. And when you, once you get it off, you definitely want to take it off right away so it doesn't remelt to the panel. At this point, like, I would not use this for service applications. I would absolutely use this for emergency applications when you have firefighters that need to come out and de-energize a system. Um, then you can kind of justify that things need to be turned off right now it is an expense that will be paid later. These panels are not nothing. You can still use them. Just need to clean them off, and it just takes elbow grease um, or a lot more PV stop than what I used. And like on a roof, when you have access to all of them, like a ballast mount, like you can get at every panel from every side. That'd be great for this. That top row is gonna be a bugger for me, and I'll get it. It'll just take a while. You know, nothing wrong with just getting a razor and razoring it all off. It just takes time. That being said, this really is great for those emergency applications. It does what it says it'll do. It does it fast. And while cleanup might take some time, it's worth it, right? Um, it is better than having that kind of stuff built into the array, I think. That upfront cost and the ongoing maintenance cost of something like rapid shutdown devices where they will fail. It's just mathematically extremely unlikely for it not to fail. So there's my impressions of PV Stop. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is one of those things that everybody's gonna have an opinion on and I'm excited to see what everybody thinks. I think it has applications. Uh, I'd like to see a better story for cleanup, but it's good at what it's built for. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and I will talk to you next time.